Hey viewers, my name is Kara. This is a very special video I have for you that was made possible once again by the Buckland Museum of Witchcraft and Magic, which is currently located in Cleveland, Ohio, where I live. I also work there part-time, and thus I have been entrusted with a loner copy. This is not my copy, I do not get to keep this. A loaned copy of the Major Arcana by Leonora Carrington. This is a new majors only tarot deck that was recently published. It was a limited run of only a thousand copies. It is already out of print according to the website, which I will link for you below. They are expecting a second edition to be ready in February of 2021, but of course you'll want to stay tuned for updates on that. Things may change. This is part of the first edition. It belongs to the Buckland Museum, not to me. So I feel like this is a, a very important piece right here, and I feel very privileged, very lucky, and honored to be able to share it with you. But they wanted me to be able to share it because it was a limited run. A lot of people have been talking about this deck, so... Let's take a look at it. I will put some links in the description to information about Leonora Carrington, such as the Wikipedia page about her and also the item info page for this deck on the Fulger publisher website. It has more information, a little bio about her, info about this deck. They are also selling a book which is still available, which was written by the people who sort of discovered this artwork. It was discovered posthumously. Leonora Carrington died in 2011, and this deck just came out. So essentially my understanding from what I've read so far is that it was her personal private artwork. Leonora Carrington was a well-known surrealist painter and writer, novelist. She was British had some Irish ancestry as well, but spent a lot of her adult life in Mexico, so she's very well known as a Mexican artist as well because she lived there for a long time. She also started the women's liberation movement in Mexico in the 1970s, which I think is a pretty big deal. So my understanding is that this was her personal tarot artwork that was discovered after the fact, and so now people are going back and looking at the influence that tarot may have had on her work the entire time that was just unknown. So the book that is still available may be of interest to you if you are interested in that. Without further ado, let's open up this beautiful box. It has a wonderful texture and is very sturdy, very beautiful blue. The booklet here has an embossed silver crescent moon on it and the little white book as we tend to call these was written by rachel pollock who is a well-known tarot author and novelist but rachel pollock has written many books on the tarot including but nowhere near limited to 78 degrees of wisdom which i know is one that a lot of people have been talking about again recently so if you don't already know the name rachel pollock but you're into tarot you should check it out Le Jeu de Tarot of Leonora Carrington by Rachel Pollock, Fulger Press. Beautiful picture of her there. So in this little booklet, Rachel is describing a bit about the history of tarot and also the fact that Leonora's cards appear to be influenced by the tarot of Marseille as well as the Smith Waite or Waite Smith, Ryder Waite Smith, as it is often known, deck or pack. Each one in this first edition comes with a little card saying which number it is, so this one is 203 out of 1,000. The director of the Buckland Museum, Stephen, has been a big fan of Leonora Carrington for quite some time, so I am not at all surprised that this is one of the first couple hundred out of the thousand. And this also says the edition sent, Huit Etoile, Eight Stars, is by Aisha Shehu Ansel. It does smell fantastic. I was going to say, I didn't know if that was kind of weird to say, but even when I looked at the Little White Book, it smells beautiful. And I don't know if everybody scents their decks, but I never thought of this until I recently got a new deck that smelled horrible when I got it out of the box. I imagine just because of like the nature of how it's printed and packaged and everything like that, but this deck smells great. 
We have some more plastic here. I can't, I can't even believe in this moment that I have been entrusted with unwrapping and like touching and looking at these cards for the first time. I don't know if we, uh, as the museum, I don't know if the Buckland Museum owns multiple copies of this or if I'm really getting the first, first look here. But again, I feel very honored and privileged and happy to be able to share with everybody. Let me just get to it, right? Now that I've gotten them out of the plastic, let's go ahead and look at them, shall we? The back is just a plain silver. It's kind of shiny. But I'm glad it's not too shiny because I was a little worried about the lighting just glaring off of them so you wouldn't be able to see them. It's shiny but not too shiny so that's nice. They have added frames with the titles. I want to try to use the box to sort of tilt it angled a little bit better for you. Here's the Fool. The Magician. They're numbered on the original in the corner. But they also, at least so far, as we can see, have very traditional elements. The High Priestess. And by traditional, I mean recognizable relations to those older decks that have become sort of what we think of as our standard. The Empress. So things like the Smith Rider Weight deck, Tarot of Marseille. Things like that. We can recognize those elements in this artwork. So even if it wasn't numbered in the corners, the emperor, I think we would be able to figure out what's what, don't you? The hierophant. I'll just go through these a little more quickly now. I don't have as much to say. Like I said, I'll put some links in the description so you can learn more. The Lovers. This is really mostly just about letting you see the art in the first edition of this deck. The Chariot. Justice. The Hermit. Wheel of Fortune. Strength. So in this deck, we will notice Justice was card number eight and Strength is card number 11. Sometimes decks switch them around. The Hanged Man. Death. Look at this one. Temperance with a beautiful blush pink. The devil. The tower. The star. Love the colors in these. The moon. I believe what I read about it also said the originals were done on thick cardboard with gold and silver leaf. The sun is next, so probably in the originals all of this silver on the moon is silver leaf. And that gold in the star and the gold in the sun here are gold leaf originally. That's my understanding based on what I've read. I imagine that that book that's all about it will go into even more detail on that. Judgment. That sort of angel figure in this judgment card is really beautiful.
and the world. So that's all of them. This is Leonora Carrington's tarot. We'll go backwards so I can put them back in order. But yes, thank you so much once again to the Buckland Museum for entrusting me with this for a week. I'm there every Saturday now, so it's only a week. I'll bring it back with me the next day I work. But everyone say thank you in the comments to the Buckland Museum for allowing us to have this bit of content to share with everyone. I know that there are, you know, several hundred other people out there in the world who got this deck in the first edition who are probably sharing it as well, but this is not something that I would normally ever be able to participate in without the museum. So big thank you to them. As I mentioned, Stephen, the director, is a fan of Leonora Carrington. He's actually the entire reason I've ever heard of her. But now, reading more about her, she just seemed like a very influential, very cool person. <laughs> that sounds like such a horrendous, you know, understatement for someone who is so famous in the surrealist movement. I do love surrealism and I just had never come across her art before. And then all of these sort of magical and mystical elements to it, some of which are almost inherent in surrealism, but you know, others which are individual artists' interests. So I imagine for, for people to have then discovered these tarot artworks that they didn't know existed and they're now going back and researching what does this mean for the for the bulk of her work and how much might tarot have impacted her life and her work that people were unaware of and for people to have a chance to see these now I think is really cool you know she was an artist who was celebrated during her lifetime but there are still new things being found to celebrate even after her death so thank you very much to the Buckland Museum thank you very much to Leonora Carrington for creating this artwork, to Rachel Pollock for writing the little white book that goes with this, to Fulger Press for producing it, and to all of you for watching and or listening to this video. Leave a comment letting me know which of the cards was your favorite just upon a first look. Whether you're familiar with the tarot or not, maybe you just really like artwork, let me know if you like surrealism, anything like that that you want to share. I will see you next time. And until then, don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.